Hey guys, Noah here. Uh, I'm a third year medical student and national athlete in Jiu Jitsu. Today, I'm making a bit of a different video talking about how to use uh, algorithms or approaches both in medicine and in Jiu Jitsu. And I hope this can be applied to other areas of your life too. So, in this video, I'm going to use the word algorithm and approach interchangeably. To me, they're just a, a systematic way to approach a problem. You want to split the problem down into its constituent parts or find the most likely problem and then you're going to attack this problem. So what's the point of doing this? Generally, it just um, reduces cognitive load. So this is the textbook by Nigel Fong. He's a doctor in Singapore and this book is very popular among med students. So he has many approaches, for example, how you approach uh, chest pain, how you approach adult pain, how you approach polyuria. So many different approaches are very useful. Uh, so generally, what he says here is what algorithms are there just to systematically and rapidly identify a likely differential. To me, I see differential as problem. Okay, problem. Uh, and this helps you to reduce cognitive load, right? And solving a problem rapidly. Just to give an example, here he shows a simple algorithm for jaundice. Jaundice is when you have yellow wing skin, you need to increase bilirubin, and then he splits it onto its various causes, like prepatic, hepatic, or post hepatic. So, similar thing can be used in jujitsu. Uh, in jujitsu, you need to solve a problem rapidly, right? It's just who can solve the problem faster. So, it's good to, to break it down to smaller parts so your brain doesn't have to process so many things at once. We can just focus on one problem. So, when you're playing guard, against an opponent. Your opponent could be doing many different things, but generally he'll only be doing one of three things, right? Think about it. He can either be standing, he can be one leg up, one leg down, or he can be on his knees. Generally, if he's standing, let's say this is my opponent, look, his legs are a bit more exposed, his center of gravity is a bit higher compared to when he's kneeling, it's the same kneeling. Yeah, so you see, if he's standing, um, his center of gravity is higher. This allows me to actually get my myself under his hips. Uh, and I can attack his legs a bit more. So I'm going to focus on attacking his legs, either doing brain bottles or doing leg locks. If he's on his knees, like here, generally it's going to be harder to attack his legs since his legs are further away and he can use his hands to defend. But I can attack upper body attacks because you see he's closer to me. The distance for me to shoot my legs to a triangle or to an omopata is less. So it's going to be a higher percentage attacks if I start attacking his upper body. And then if he's on one leg up, or one leg down. Generally, I tend to favor upper body attacks too because it's easy to go shin on chin and force him into a double knee position. And then I can attack, uh, go back to this algorithm to attack the upper body. Or you can also go for the legs, depending on what you favor. But as you can see, if I break down the problem into what my opponent is doing, is he standing, is he on one leg up or one leg down, or is he on his knees? This allows me to break down the problem. And then in an actual match, when my opponent is doing all these many, many things, uh, it's quick, it's very fast for me to identify, okay, my opponent's standing, I'm going to look for my leg attacks. I'm going to start grabbing his legs. Oh, okay, my opponent's on his knees, I'm going to start forcing close guard, I'm going to go upper body attacks, I'm going to do close guard attacks. So, this basically reduces cognitive load and helps you uh, solve the problem very quickly. And I hope this is helpful. Uh, and also, if you want any more specific approaches to different positions in Jiu-Jitsu, please let me know in the comments below because I'll be making more videos like that in future.